Hi class! So for today's discussion here in Statics of Rigid Bodies, we're going to discuss the resultant of parallel force system. So for this topic, we will have the intended learning outcome as follows. So the first one is students must be able to compute the resultant of parallel force systems. And the second one is students must be able to locate and draw the resultant of parallel force system. So let us first recall what parallel forces are. So parallel forces, one in which the action lines of all the forces are parallel. Okay, so to solve for the resultant of parallel force system, uh, this will be R is equal to square root of Rx squared plus Ry squared. So your R here will be the magnitude of your resultant. Okay, and your Rx here will be the summation of all the uh, horizontal okay, component of all the forces. Okay, and your Ry will be the summation of all the vertical components of all the forces. But here's the thing here. Okay, so for parallel force system, okay, your forces, okay, in the system will just be either horizontal or vertical. It cannot be a combination of uh, vertical forces and parallel forces because that will no longer be a parallel force system. Okay, so that will be a non-concurrent force system. Okay, so again, um, in parallel force system, okay, your forces here will just be either vertical to one another or horizontal to one another. Meaning to say, okay, only one, okay, from these two equations will be used. Okay, it's just either horizontal uh, forces or vertical forces. Okay, so meaning to say, uh, whatever we use, okay, from uh, these two um, equations, uh, Rx or Ry, okay, it will automatically be equal to, to your resultant. Okay, so let's say that your Rx uh, is zero because all of your forces are uh, vertical forces. So meaning to say your Rx will be zero. So uh, what happens here will be, um, this will be zero and your Ry squared, your square here will be canceled and your R will be automatically equal to Ry. Okay, it will be the same way when your Ry is zero. So your Rx here, Rx square, it will be canceled. Your, your square here will be canceled and this square root. So your R will be equal to Rx. Okay, so um, we have no theta for uh, solving uh, the resultant for parallel force system because your forces, again, is just either horizontal or vertical. Okay, so no need to indicate okay, the theta or the inclination okay, of your resultant. So, uh, for the resultant of parallel force system, what we just need are the magnitude of the resultant, um, the direction, so either up or downward, to the right or to the left, and the location or position. Okay, so we're going to discuss how to determine the location or position um, of uh, the resultant on our next slide. Okay, but here, um, as you can see in this slide, okay, so you can see here at the right uh, all the examples of uh, parallel force systems. So these two, we are uh, familiar with these uh, two systems. Okay, so uh, apparently these are parallel force systems. But for the, uh, this third uh, example, okay, so this is also a parallel force system. So uh, we don't see it uh, uh, usually, okay, in a, from our previous uh, discussions, right? So we don't uh, used to to see this kind of load, okay? But but this is actually also a parallel force system. So we're going to discuss these types of loads, okay, in the succeeding slides. So to determine the location or position of the resultant, we are going to use Varignon's theorem. Okay, so as we have learned from our previous discussions, Varignon's theorem states that the moment of a force is equivalent to the summation of the moment of its components. Okay, so it will be applicable also to your resultant. Okay, so that the, mom that the moment of your resultant okay, will just be equivalent to the moment or to the summation of the moment of all the component forces of that resultant. Okay, so let's say we have here um, a parallel force system. Okay, so this parallel force system um, has uh, forces F1, F2, F3, and F4. Okay, so let's say uh, for this parallel force system, this will be the resultant R. Okay, so this will be the resultant, and this resultant okay, is located okay, at a distance D 
okay, from the leftmost part of this system, okay, or from point A. Okay, so uh, this will be the equation, okay, for Varignon's theorem that the moment, okay, of this resultant R, let's say uh, about point A, okay, so that will be R D is also equivalent to uh, the summation of the moment of all the component forces. So in this case, the component forces of this resultant um, are uh, F1, F2, F3, and F4. So these are the component forces that make up this resultant okay, for this parallel force system. So we're going to uh, sum up okay, all the moment, okay, all the moments of F1, F2, F3, and F4 at this same point, at point A. Okay, the same point where we uh, get the uh, moment of your resultant R. So th that is the meaning of this equation. Okay, so again, your RD, it is the moment of the resultant about point A. And the summation of FD is the summation of moment of the component forces, that is F1, F2, and so on, about point A. Okay, so for the summation okay, of uh, the moment of the component forces, we, we are going to use the sign convention, the following sign convention. Okay, so for a uh, clockwise rotation, okay, it will be a uh, positive, and for counterclockwise rotation, it will be negative. Okay, so let's say here F1, your F1, if you uh, take the moment of F1 about point A, it will have a clockwise rotation, right? For your F2, it will also have a clockwise rotation about point A. For F3, it will have um, a counterclockwise rotation about point A. Your F4, it will also have clockwise rotation about point A. So uh, that will be the sign convention okay, for the summation okay, of the moments of the component forces. And also the same for your resultant. So your resultant, it will also have a rotation uh, clockwise okay, about point A. So let's start solving problems about a uh, resultant of parallel force system. Okay, so the problem here is Determine the resultant of parallel force system acting on the bar AB shown below. So this is our um, parallel force system. So uh, the forces involved in this parallel force system are vertical forces. Okay, so we're going to um, solve this. Yeah. So let us uh, start solving. So we are asked here to, to solve for the resultant. So your resultant must include the magnitude the direction, and the location, okay? So from our uh, parallel force system given, okay, so uh, our forces involved here are just vertical forces, okay? So for our solution, okay, we will only solve for RY, okay? So your RY will be the summation of all the vertical forces, and um, our assumption here is that all upward forces will be positive and all downward forces will be um, negative. So for your RY, okay, so your 20 newton will be uh, negative since it is downward, so that's why it's negative 20 here. Your 10 Newton force here uh, will be uh, down, uh, is downward, so therefore that will be negative here also. And your 4 10 Newton force here, it is upward, so that will be positive 10 here. And your 40 Newton force is downward, so this will be negative here. So summing up uh, this uh, forces, okay, so your RY will be equal to negative 20 minus 10 plus 10 minus 40, and it will give you negative 60 Newton. So the, the negative sign here indicates that um, your RY, okay, or your resultant, okay, your vertical, uh, the vertical component of your resultant is downward. Okay, so that's the uh, meaning of this negative sign. Okay, your RY is downward. Okay, so for your RX, it will be zero since there's no horizontal forces in the system, right? So that will automatically be zero. And if you solve for the uh, magnitude of your uh, resultant R, it will just be equal to square root of RX squared plus RY squared. Okay, so automatically your R will be equal to RY, but your RY is negative. So the, the thing here is that there's no negative resultant. Ha? We have no negative resultant because if you put this negative 60 uh, here, okay, that negative will, will also be cancelled because uh, it will be squared, right? So your Rx is zero, so your Ry will, will just be equal to 60 Newton. Okay, so um, the direction of your resultant, you already uh, know that, 
Okay, because of your RY. Okay, so your R will also have the same direction as your RY. So your resultant will will be down well downward also. Okay, so again your resultant the magnitude will be 60 newton and the direction will be downward. So this will be the answer for the magnitude and direction of the resultant. So uh, we're going to to solve still for the third item, which is uh, the location of the resultant. So to solve for the location of the resultant, we will use Varignon's theorem. Uh, so we're going to assume that uh, your resultant R is located somewhere here. Okay, so um, so this is distance D, okay, from point A. So this is point A or from the leftmost part of uh, the system. Okay, so this is distance D. So we're going to use Varignon's theorem. So again, Varignon's theorem uh, states that the moment of your resultant, okay, will also be equal or equivalent to the summation of the moment of the component forces, which are these forces, 10 newton. Uh, 20 newton, 10 newton, 10 newton, and 40 newton. Okay, so this will be the component forces of this resultant R for this system. Okay, so we're going to take moment at A. Okay, so the moment at A of your resultant R will be R times D. So that will be the perpendicular distance about point A of your resultant R. And that is also equivalent to the summation of the moment of this uh, component forces. Okay, that make up the resultant. Okay, so we, we will have this assumption that all clockwise rotations will be positive. Okay, so um, let's take the moment of uh, your uh, resultant R about point A. So the, the magnitude of your R will be 60 Newton. Okay, that's why it's 60 here and its moment R will be D. Okay, so um, the rotation of your resultant R about point A will be clockwise, right? So that's why it's positive here. Okay, so that will be equivalent to the summation of the moment of the component forces. So for your 20 Newton force, uh, it is actually at point A. So meaning to say there will be no moment. Okay, since it passes through a uh, point A, okay, so there will be no moment okay, for 20 Newton force about point A. Okay, and for your 10 Newton force, Okay, so uh, if you take its moment about point A, it will have this moment arm, okay, or perpendicular distance. This will be 2 meter. That's why it's 10 times 2 here, 10 newton times 2 meters, okay. And its rotation about point A will be uh, clockwise. That's why it's positive here. Now, for your 10 newton force here that is upward, okay, so if we take this, uh, its moment about point A, its moment arm will be 2 meters plus 3 meters, so that will be 5 meters. So that will be 10 newton times 5 meters. And its rotation about point A will be uh, counterclockwise. That's why it's negative here. Okay, and for your 40 newton force, okay, its moment arm about point A, if we take its moment, okay, it will be 2 plus 3 plus 3. So that will be 8 meters. That's why it's 40 newton times 8 meters here. Okay, and its rotation about point A will be uh, clockwise, right? So that's why it's uh, positive here. Okay, so solving for the value of D. So let's input this in our calculator. So this will just be 10 times 2 minus 10 times 5 plus 40 times 8. Okay, that will be um, that will be 290. And we divide both sides by 60, okay, to get the value of D. So this will be divided by 60. So the answer will be for uh, 29 over 6 or 4.833 meter. Okay, so this will be the uh, location or position of our resultant R from point A. Okay, so this will be 4.8333 meter from point A. So this will be the, the answer. So you have also to check if your location is logical. So since your uh, force here, there's a 40 Newton force here, and there's, uh, let's say, if we sum these two forces, these are uh, for, uh, 30 Newton, and we have here a 10 Newton force. So basically, it should be... Um, somewhere here, so it's it's logical that uh, that it should be located here, right? So it cannot be located, uh, let's say somewhere here, okay, at uh, near the leftmost part part because your 40 newton force uh, is uh, the largest force and it's located at the at the right side, right? So it will basically be uh, in between, okay, uh, of our uh, forces, right? So it cannot be located somewhere here. Okay, so it will not be logical if it's located, let's say, here. Okay, because our 40 Newton force is located here, the largest force. Okay, so um, let's proceed to our next example. 
Okay, for number two, um, a parallel force system acts on the lever shown below. Determine the magnitude and position of the resultant. Okay, so we are asked the same question here for this problem. So this is our uh, force system. And this is actually um, similar to our first uh, problem, right? So our forces here uh, involved, okay, are just vertical forces. So let's start solving. So again, we are asked here to solve for the resultant. That must include the magnitude, the direction, and location of your resultant. Okay, so since these are all vertical forces, we're going to sum up uh, all these ver vertical forces. So that will just be Ry is equal to summation of all the vertical forces. And our assumption here uh, is that all uh, upward forces will be positive. Okay, so for your Ry, it will be equal to um, your first force here is 30 newton, and this is downward. That's why it's negative here. And then we have here 60 newton downward force, so that will be negative also here. And we have here 20 newton upward force. That's why it's positive here. And we have here 40 newton downward force. That's why it's negative here. So solving for your Ry, that will be negative 30 minus 60 plus 20 minus 40. And that will give you negative 110 Newton. So again, your uh, negative sign here indicates that your resultant okay, or your Ry is downward. Okay, so as you can see, it, it will be logical naman since uh, you have, again, three uh, downward forces here and uh, your downward forces are larger okay, than your upward force here. So obviously, your resultant should be downward. Okay, so again, your Rx will be zero since there will be no horizontal forces here in your system. Okay, so your resultant R will be square root of Rx squared plus Ry squared. Okay, so substituting Ry here, this will be negative 110 squared. So the square root of that. So that will become positive since uh, it will be squared, right? So your resultant R will be 110 Newton. And you know that your uh, resultant will be downward. Okay, since your Ry is uh, downward, no? since your Ry is negative. Okay, so your resultant R will have 110 Newton magnitude and its direction will be downward. Okay, so we're going to solve again for uh, the distance D okay, or the location of your uh, resultant R. Okay, so again, we will assume that your resultant R is uh, located somewhere here. Okay, so it's located somewhere here and um, we're going to solve for this distance D. Okay, using Varignon's theorem. So again, your Varignon's theorem, we're going to uh, sum up moment or take moment about point A, okay, of your resultant, okay, the moment of your resultant and the moment of your component forces about that same point. So um, your R, again, is 110 Newton and uh, the unknown is distance D. Okay, so it will have a positive uh, rotation since it will be clockwise about point A, right? So it will be positive here equals to um, the moment of all the forces, okay, your 30 Newton, okay, force here will have a moment of 30 times its moment arm, which is 2. Okay, so that will be 30 Newton times 2 meters, and um, its rotation will be clockwise. That's why it's positive here. Now, for your uh, 60 Newton force, it will have a moment arm of 2 plus 3, about point A, right? So that will be 5, and it will have a clockwise rotation as well about point A. That's why it's positive here, positive 60 times 5. Now, your 20 Newton force, uh, if we uh, take its moment about point A, its moment arm will be uh, 2 meters plus 3 meters plus 2 meters, so that will be 7 meters, so um, that will be the moment arm, and uh, its rotation will be uh, counterclockwise. That's why it's negative here. Okay, and for your 40 Newton force, okay, its moment arm about point A will be 2 meters plus 3 meters plus 2 meters plus 4 meters, and that will be 11 meters, and your rotation about point A will be clockwise. Okay, that's why it's positive here. So solving for the value of D, okay, solving this equation, let's input this in our calculator. This will be 30 times 2 plus 60 times 5 minus 20 times 7 plus 40 times 11, that will, be, that will be 660, divided by 110 to solve for the value of D. So that will be 6 meters. Uh, so that will be the, the location 
okay, of your resultant R from point A. So that will be 6 meter from point A. Okay, so that will be the answer for this problem. Okay, so before we proceed to our next example, uh, we're going to discuss first the different types of loads. Okay, so these are the different types uh, of loads. Okay, so actually, okay, the forces that uh, we are discussing okay, from our discussions all throughout our discussion from the very start, all the forces that we are talking about are actually point load. Okay, they, they are called point load, okay, those forces, okay. So, um, also, we have here uniformly distributed load. So, this is uniformly distributed because, uh, let's say, uh, your, your body, okay, the force that is uh, experienced, okay, or the load that is being carried in this uh, part of the body, it, it's also the same here at this point, okay. That's why it's uniformly distributed load. Okay, so for your triangular distributed load, so your load is varying here, okay, from this intensity, okay, to zero, or from zero to this intensity, okay, so it's varying, so this is triangularly distributed, and we also have trapezoidally distributed load, okay, so your, your uh, load here is a trapezoid, okay, so your, your load here, okay, in your triangular distributed load is a triangle, Okay, and here in your uniformly distributed load, your load here is a uh, rectangle. Okay, so uh, these uh, forces or these uh, loads, okay, this uh, uniformly distributed load, triangular distributed load, trapezoidally distributed load, these loads can actually be converted, okay, into its equivalent point load. Okay, so we can convert this, okay, so... Uh, again, as I've mentioned, uniformly distributed load, triangular distributed load, and trapezoidally distributed load, they can be converted into their equivalent point load. Okay, so this uniformly distributed load, it can have its equivalent point load, also this triangular distributed load, and this trapezoidally distributed load. So uh, this is how you convert okay, uh, a uniformly distributed load okay, or rectangular load into its equivalent um, point load. So in this case, let's say this is your uh, rectangular load or uniformly distributed load. So its equivalent point load will be this uh, this point load R. Okay, so this point load R, if you solve that, that will just be the area of the rectangle. Okay, so as we know, the, the area of rectangle is just base times height. So from our, uh, from, from this, okay, so the, the base here will be the length of the uh, of this load, okay, and uh, multiply by the intensity, okay, so the intensity of this uh, uniformly distributed load is WO, so its area will just be WO uh, times L, uh, your WO will be the height, okay, of your rectangular load, okay, so again, that will be base times height, so that will be WO times L, okay, so um, now for uh, the location of this point load, Okay, uh, it will just be uh, in the middle, okay, or in the mid span, okay, of your uniformly distributed load because it's just a rectangle. So uh, basically, its the its location will be at the mid span. So that will just be, um, let's say, L over two from this point, no, or even from from the other side, it will be the same. Uh, it will be the same distance d or position or location, right? It will be L over two. Okay, so now for your triangle, we can also convert your triangle, okay, or triangular load into its equivalent point load. So um, it will just be also the area, okay, of your triangle. So this will be the uh, equivalent point load of this triangular load. Okay, so uh, this uh, R, okay, equivalent point load R will just be the area of the triangle. And as we know, the area of a triangle is just one half base times height. Okay, so in this case, uh, the base will be L, okay, and the uh, height of the triangle will be uh, WO. So this will be the intensity of uh, this load, okay, that will be WO. Okay, so that will be the area, one half WO times L. Okay, and the position, okay, of your resultant R or your point equivalent point load R here, Okay, it will not be in the mid span. Okay, so it will be uh, it will be near the the side that is uh, that has 
uh, more intensity, right? So it cannot be located somewhere here, okay, with less intensity. It should be uh, located somewhere near, okay, to the uh, side that has more intensity. And the, the, the side here that has more intensity is at this side, right? So it will be nearer than this side, than uh, this side, right, or this point. So it will be somewhere he, uh, here, okay? So uh, that distance D is actually 2L over 3, okay, from the tip of the triangle. From this tip, okay, it will be 2L over 3, okay? But from the from the uh, this side of this triangle, this vertical side of the triangle, okay, it will be L over 3. So if you sum that up, that will be that should be equal to L, to L plus to L over three uh, plus L over three. That should be equal to L. Okay, so uh, you just um, remember, okay, that uh, from the tip, okay, from the tip of a triangle, okay, that distance, okay, will be two L over three. But from the vertical side of the triangle, that will be L over three. Okay, so. Um, that will be the position or location of the equivalent point load of the triangle. Okay, so now for trapezoidally distributed load, okay, we can actually uh, derive okay uh, its equivalent point load okay by dividing this uh, trapezoidal load okay. Let's say uh, we divide it uh, into rectangle and triangle, so we can solve for that. Okay, but anyway, um, there's no uh, uh, like this, okay, uh, we will have no, uh, like, a formula that you have to memorize for trapezoidal load, okay, so it's, it's, ano kasi, it's uh, longer, okay, than this, uh, than this formula, okay, so we will not memorize that, okay, but we're going to solve that, okay, in our examples, no, but anyway, so let's start solving. So let's proceed now to our third problem. A beam of length L supports a load which varies from W newton per meter at the right end to zero at the left end. Determine the magnitude and position of the resultant. Okay, so uh, our given here, okay, given a parallel force system is a triangular distributed load. Okay, so we're going to solve this. So we are asked here to solve for the resultant okay of the given uh, force system okay so our system here okay the force involved here is actually a triangular distributed load okay so when you say triangular distributed load uh, the intensity of your load here is varying from zero okay at this point to um, an intensity of w okay at this point okay so uh, the unit for your w will be newton per meter Okay, so that will be the unit for all distributed loads. It should be newton per meter, pound per inch, pound per feet, kips per feet, kips per inch. Okay, so uh, that will, should be the unit. Okay, so um, your R here, okay, your resultant here, okay, is actually the uh, equivalent point load of this triangular distributed load. Okay, so again, to solve for... The For this equivalent point load, okay, it will just be the area of this triangle. Okay, so the area of this triangle will just be one half base times height, where in your base will be your length here, and your height will be this intensity. This is W, right? So that will just be the um, resultant. Okay, that will be the equivalent point load. Okay, of this triangular distributed load, that is just one half. Uh, times W times L. And the unit for that is Newton. Since, since this is a point load, right? This is already a point load, your R here. So that should be Newton and its direction is downward. Okay, so um, this is Newton because uh, the unit for your W is Newton per meter and the unit of your length here is meter. So your meter here will be canceled. Okay, and what will remain is just Newton. Okay, so for all point loads, your unit should be Newton, pound, keeps. Okay, and for your distributed loads, whether it's uniformly distributed load, triangular load, or trapezoidally distributed load, uh, their, their unit should all be Newton per meter, per, pound per inch, pound per feet, keep per inch, keeps per feet. Okay, so that should be the unit for that. Okay, so now for the location, okay, of this resultant or this equivalent point load. So as I've as I've discussed in the previous slide, okay, it will just be 
um, if we measure this resultant R, okay, its distance from uh, this side of the triangle, this is from the tip, okay, of the triangle, it will have a longer distance D, right, compared to the other side, compared to this. Okay, so because your resultant R, it will not be located at the center, huh? it will not be located at the mid spine, it should be located nearer, okay, the side that has larger intensity, which is this side. So it should be larger, the distance D should be uh, greater here, okay, at this side from the tip of your triangle. So this distance D should be 2L over 3, okay, but that 2L over 3 is actually derived, okay, from integration. So we're not going to discuss that here. Okay, so we're going to discuss this discuss that i think to our disc in our discussion um for centroids no so we're going to discuss that in that topic okay but here uh, you, uh we just uh, memorize it as of now okay that uh if we measure the distance d of your resultant r from the tip of the triangle it will be 2l over uh, 3 okay and uh if we measure it from from this side naman okay it will just be l over 3 Okay, so this this side should be longer ha uh, than this side. Okay, so that will be the distance d two two l over three or two third l. Okay, from point O and its unit should be meters. That's uh, because it's distance. Okay, so, so it should be in meters, inch, feet. Okay, so this will be the answers for uh, this problem. Okay, so let's proceed to sample problem number four. So the beam AB supports a load which varies from an intensity of 15 newton per meter to 200 newton per meter. Calculate the magnitude and position of the resultant load. So um, in this problem, okay, if this illustration is not given, okay, so it says in the problem that uh, the the beam, okay, or the system, okay, has a load which varies from an intensity of 50 newton per meter to 200 newton per meter. So from that, you can already know that it's a trapezoidally di distributed load. So it cannot be a uniformly distributed load because your your intensity here is varying from 50 to 200. It cannot also be a triangular load because uh, it's varying from 50. Okay, it's not varying from from zero to 200. If if that's the case, that's a triangular load. But since this is varying from 50 to 200 newton meter, okay, newton per meter. So, uh, meaning to say, okay, your uh, load here is trapezoidally distributed load. Okay, so again, from, from this problem, okay, we are asked to solve for uh, the resultant, its position, magnitude, and direction. So uh, we're going to solve this. So for this problem, we can actually uh, use two approaches. Okay, we can use two solutions to solve this problem. So the first solution, okay, so since our given here is a trapezoidally distributed load, uh, we can actually divide this uh, trapezoidal uh, load okay, into shapes okay, that we can solve for the point load or equivalent point load. So it can be a rectangle and triangle. Okay, so um, in your rectangle, okay, you can solve for uh, it's equivalent point load, okay, as we know, okay, the equivalent point load of a rectangle or rectangular load will just be the area of a rectangle, which is base times height. Now, and now for your uh, triangle, the equivalent point load will just be the area, okay, of the triangle, which is one half base times height, okay. So, if you're going to ask me, okay, if you can solve for the uh, equivalent point load of this trapezoid, okay, by... Uh, using the formula for solving the area of a trapezoid, yes, you can do that. So if you know that the area of a trapezoid is uh, one half uh, A plus B times H, wherein your A and B are these sides, okay, and your H uh, is this uh, length, right? So you can use that, okay, to solve for the magnitude of the resultant if it's a trapezoid. But the thing is, um, we don't know the uh, the formula, okay, for uh, solving the position of the of that equivalent point load, but actually there's an established formula, but the formula is too long, okay, and I don't want you to memorize that. Okay, so we will solve this instead, uh, the distance d of that uh, equivalent point load, no, per trapezoid. Okay, so we're going to use this solution, okay, and also um, we can also use solution two. We can divide our trapezoid into two triangles. So this will be the first triangle, and this will be the second triangle. And from that, you will also solve for the, their equivalent point loads for this triangle and for this triangle. Uh, so let's solve this using solution one. 
Okay, so for our solution one, okay, so uh, let's say uh, this uh, equivalent uh, point load, this is from the rectangular load, right? So let's name it as R1. And for R, uh, for this triangular load, okay, let's name it as R2. So this will be the equivalent point load of this uh, triangle. Okay, now, uh, as you can see here, uh, they are now point loads, right? R1 and R2. So uh, this is uh, just the same as the uh, problems that we have solved from the previous examples, right? So these are just point loads, okay? So we know that it's resultant, okay? Uh, let's assume that it will be located here and th that will be distance D from point A. Now for your R1, okay, your distance one here, okay, that will be the uh, its moment arm from point A. And as you know that this distance one is actually the mid span, okay, of this length 12 meter. So that will just be 12 over 2 or 6 meters. And for the uh, position or location of R2, again, this is the uh, point load or equivalent point load of this triangle. So if we're going to, to solve for its position, okay, and we know that its position, if it's measured from uh, this point, okay, from the tip of this triangle, so uh, it will have a longer... Uh, longer distance, right, compared to uh, the other side, okay? So, uh, meaning to say this distance 2, it should be 2 L over 3. And the other side actually is L over 3, right? So, this will be 2 L over 3. So, our L here is 12 meters. So, that will just be 2 times 12 over 3, no? So, now, uh, let's first solve for um, our R1. Okay, so your R1 here, uh, again, that's the equivalent point load of this uh, rectangle. So that will just be base times height. So the base for this rectangle is 12 meters, right? And the height will be uh, the intensity, with it, which is 50 newton per meter. Okay? So that will be 50 newton per meter times 12 meters. So again, it will be canceled. Meter will be canceled. So that will just be 50 times 12. And if you input that in your calculator, that will be 600 newton. Okay, so your R1, okay, this R1, its magnitude, okay, is 600 Newton. Now, for your R2, okay, so again, this is the equivalent point load of your uh, triangular load here. So, uh, that will just be the area of the triangle, one half base times height. So, its base will be uh, this length, which is 12 meter meters, right? And the height will be... Uh, this height. So don't get confused here. Okay, your height here, the height of your triangle here is not 200 newton per meter. Okay, so the height of your triangle here, class, um, is 200, and you subtract this. So this is 50 newton per meter. So that will be 200 minus 50. That will be 150. So the height of your triangle here will be 150, ha, not 200. Don't get confused uh, in this. Okay, so the height of your triangle is 150, and your uh, base here is 12 meter. Oh, so that will be one half times 150 newton per meter times 12 meter. So meter will be cancelled. Okay, so let's input this in our calculator. This will be one half times 150 times 12. So that will be 900 newton. So that will be the equivalent uh, point load okay, of your triangular load here. That will be 900 newton. Okay, now um, to solve for uh, the resultant R, of course, uh, the forces involved here are just uh, vertical forces, right? Your R1 and R2 are vertical forces. So to solve for uh, resultant R, it will just be Ry. So your Ry will be equal to summation of all the vertical forces. Okay, so that will just be uh, 600. Okay, so your R1 is 600. Since it is downward, it will be negative. And uh, your R2 will be 900. And since, since it is downward, it will be negative also here. So for your Ry, okay, it will be negative 600 minus 900. That will be negative 1,500 Newton. Okay, so I'm um, solving for your resultant. So that will just be 1,500 Newton. So again, there's no negative resultant. Okay, so your resultant will be 1,500 Newton. Okay, and your uh, direction here will be uh, downward since your Ry is negative. No? So your R will be 1,500 Newton downward. Okay, so that will be for your magnitude. Now, for the distance T, okay, or location or position of your resultant, okay, let's say from point A. So this distance D, we can solve this using Varignon's theorem. Okay, so that the, that the moment of this resultant R, 
okay, is also equivalent to the summation of the moment of this component forces R1 and R2. Okay, so uh, we will use that. So we will take moment about point A. So that will be moment at A is equal to the moment of uh, your resultant R, which is R times D. Okay, and that is equivalent also to the moment of, of this component forces R1 and R2. So our summation here is positive for clockwise rotation. Now your R will be uh, 1,500 and your uh, moment arm will be D. Okay, and since it will uh, rotate okay, about point A uh, in a clockwise direction, it will be positive here. So that is equal to the summation of all, of all the... Uh, of the moment of all the component forces, which are R1. So your R1, that is 600. So it will be 600 here. And um, its moment arm will be D1. So again, this D1 is just half of uh, 12 meters since uh, this is from your rectangular load, right? So distance one will just be 12 over two or six meters, right? And it will have a clockwise rotation about point A. That's why it will be positive here. Now, for your R2, okay, so your R2 is 900, okay, and your moment arm here will be uh, this distance 2. And as we know, this distance 2, uh, if we measure this from the tip of this triangle up to the location or position of this R2, it will just be 2L over 3, right? So 2 times L, L will be 12, so that will be 2 times 12 over 3, okay? And its rotation about point A will be clockwise. That's why it's positive here. Okay, so solving for distance D, okay, so let's input this in our calculator. This will be 600 times 12 over 2, which is 6, plus 900 times 2, uh, times 12 over 3. Okay, so that will be 10,800, and we divide both sides by 1,500 to solve for D. Okay, so that will be 36 over 5, or 7.2 meters. So that will be the distance D, okay, of your resultant R, Okay, from point A. Okay, so that will be now the answer. So also, um, if we actually uh, redraw this uh, uh, system, no, we can redraw this, redraw it this way. So from your principle of transmissibility, we can actually uh, uh, just uh, extend these forces. No, so uh, just for you to figure this out. No, so this is uh, just the typical. Uh, parallel for system that we solved from our previous problems, right? So it can be redrawn this way, but you are not, ano naman, you are not required to redraw it this way naman. So I just uh, show it to you for you to figure it out. Okay, so um, again, uh, our answers here will be R is 1,500 Newton downward and your distance D will be 7.2 meter from point A. So this will be the answer for this problem. Now, if we're going to solve this problem using solution 2, uh, so this will be our solution 2. So we divide our trapezoid into two triangles. So you can also do that. Uh, so for uh, your first triangle, this will be uh, that triangle, and this will be uh, your second triangle. Okay, so uh, your first triangle, its equivalent point load, we name it as R1. Okay, and it's located D1, okay, from point A. And your second triangle, it's, uh, we name it here as R2, and it is located distance 2, okay, from your point A. Okay, so from here, okay, we can solve for R1, and as we know, that will just be the area of this triangle. So one half base times height, that will just be one half of your uh, base, which is 12 meter, and your height here will be the intensity, which is 50 newton per meter. So that will just be one half, 50 newton per meter times 12 meter. So meters will be canceled. Okay, so inputting that in your calculator, one half times 50 times 12, so that will just be 300 newton. Okay, so that will be the uh, magnitude of your R1. Now for your R2, so the triangle here will be this triangle. Okay, so we can say that um, uh, the, the base of this triangle, okay, so it depends on the orientation. No? So uh, let's say uh, this will be the base of the triangle. No, so the base of this triangle is 200 newton per meter, and its height, let's say, will be this height, right? So this will be the the um, height of this triangle, and this is equivalent to 12 meter. No, so from that, uh, that will be one half base times height. So your base here will be 200, and your height here will be 12 meter. 
Uh, so that will be one half two hundred newton per meter times twelve meter. So meter will be cancelled. So let's input this in our calculator. One half times two hundred times twelve. So it will be one thousand two hundred newton. Uh, so that will be the magnitude of our um, R two, no? So that's the equivalent point load of this triangular load. So now. Um, we're going to solve for the resultant. So obviously, your resultant will just be um, the, the summation of all the vertical forces. Okay, so that will just be um, 300. So your R1 is 300 since it, since it is downward. So that will be negative here. And your, one and your R2 is 1,200 Newton and it is downward. That's why it's negative also here. Okay, so your RY will be negative 1,500 Newton. And this is the same answer. Okay, uh, from our solution one. Okay, so um, your R here will be 1,500 Newton downward. Okay, so that will be the magnitude and the, excuse me, the direction of your resultant R. Now, um, we, we also have to solve for the distance D. So again, we will use Varignon's theorem for this. Okay, so using Varignon's theorem, we will uh, take moment about point A. Okay, we will take the moment of your resultant R and the component forces R1 and R2. So for your R, okay, so again, its moment arm is distance D from point A. Okay, so that will be 1,500 times D and its rotation will be uh, clockwise. That's why it's positive here. It's equal to the summation of the moment of the component forces R1 and R2. So your R1 here... Uh, will be 300 okay times its moment arm which is this d1 and your d1 here so from the triangle okay so th the location of this equivalent point load if it's um uh measured okay from the uh vertical side of the triangle not at the tip of the triangle so this will be a uh, shorter side okay so this will be uh, L over 3, right, if we measure uh, the position of the resultant from uh, this side of the triangle, from the vertical side of the triangle. So this will be D1, or okay? this will be L over 3. Okay, so L over 3, that's why it's uh, one third L, or uh, we're in our L here is 12, so that will be 1 times 12 over 3. Okay, so uh, it's rotation, your R1, okay, the rotation about point A will be clockwise. That's why it's positive here. Now, for your R2, okay, so your R2, again, is 1,200 Newton, so that will be 1,200, and its moment arm about point A will be this distance 2. So this distance 2, okay, so the position of your R2 will be measured from the tip, okay, of your triangle, so meaning to say, uh, if it's measured from the tip of the triangle, it will be, um, it will be the larger uh, distance, right, or longer distance. So that will be two L over three. Okay, and from this in this side, naman, this will be L over three. So uh, what we need is this side. So this will be two L over three. That will be two times twelve over three. So that's the moment arm of your R two. Okay, so its rotation, again, about point A will be clockwise. That's why it's also positive here. Now, solving for the uh, distance D. Okay, so let's input this in our calculator. This will be 300 times one-third of 12 uh, plus 1,200 times two-third of 12. Okay, so that will be 10,800 also divided by 1,500 to solve for D. So that will be 36 over 5 or 7.2 meters from point A. So this is the same answer okay, that we had in our solution 1, right? So this will now be the, the answer. So supposedly it should be the same. You know? So you can use either solution 1 or solution 2 for this problem. So if what's convenient to you, okay, so use that. Okay. So that concludes our discussion. So I hope that you learn and attain the intended learning outcomes for this topic. So again, reminder that we have a course material assessment task for this topic. So the course material assessment task is located um, in the uh, course material uploaded okay, about this topic. So you have to solve that and submit that. So happy studying class. God bless you. Keep safe. Bye-bye.